This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live from the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. Uh, we have some very sophisticated technology and technicians that are helping us broadcast today. Uh, we are a show that focuses on positive stories, success stories of individuals and companies in Hawaii. Uh, and we learn a little bit about them and their secrets to success. Uh, before we get into that, I just wanted to mention that last week I was not able to host the show, uh, but I was busy in Washington, D.C. at the SBA's uh, Regulatory Fairness Board hearing. Uh, provided testimony and also participated in the board meetings. Uh, we've got some excellent opportunity ahead of us uh, with the new administration to address some of the regulatory challenges that small businesses have throughout the country. So far we've got about 300 in the pipeline of changes that we want to make in order to make things better for the small business uh, to thrive and be profitable. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions for more regulatory change, please let me know and you can email me at reg at regbaker.com and I'll reach out and we'll get something going. Uh, now, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Dennis Wong, who's the Senior Vice President of Hawaii National Bank. Uh, he is here uh, for, I think, the third time. Yes. You know, so welcome back. Thank you, Reg. And we've got Leah Hunt Young, who is with the President of Goldwing Supply, uh, who's been a company in Hawaii for many years. Uh, and she's going to give us a little bit of history on that. And I guess we've got a, a history with, with Dennis as well. So you guys have worked together for a while, correct? Yes, we have for quite some time. Yeah, before myself, my dad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Dennis, you worked with uh, Leah's father for a while? Yes, mm -hmm. Frank Young dating back to about the mid-1980s, uh, so over 30 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's very nice fortunate. to have that kind of relationship. Very blessed and it's uh, very unique. And I guess you've been able to see him pass the torch on to Leah, and Leah, mm -hmm. and you picked it up, and you're running with it now. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> In fact, this is just part one. Part two is going to be next week when I add on to your 300 that you just. Oh, okay. That, well, look forward to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, my dad uh, laid the foundation for the business, and that was a number of years ago. And he had a very um, specific set of skills in aviation mechanics. Mm -hmm. And when he came back home to Hawaii from um, San Francisco. He um, started a parts business and um, specializing in aircraft parts, and then we moved moved over to lighting, and then we expanded into renewables. Lighting in an airport environment, or correct? Yeah. Yep. So uh, lighting, anything that goes on an airfield. So that includes the taxiway, runways, signs, um, navigational aids such as windsocks, uh, Pappy devices. Mm -hmm. So everything that goes on an airfield that's FAA approved. Um, Dennis has seen some of the projects that we've worked on in the past, which includes, um, you know, the traditional lighting that you see out on an airport, in addition to some more um, innovative solutions that we've provided for our military bases as well. Mm, so that's, yeah. that's and it's amazing. We've, I don't know how many we have, but I would imagine there's quite a number of airfields in Hawaii. Some we are knowledgeable about, we can <laughs> see every day, and others yeah. we may not. Yeah, you know, um, I, I have to say that a part of it is what um, is attractive to me. I prefer to uh, work uh, b below the radar. And, um, you know, working in an airport environment is uh, you just kind of keep your nose to the ground and you do what you do. And um, it's not a big flashy environment, but what we do is uh, very important for the um, Hawaiian Islands especially, but also the aviation ind industry in general worldwide. It's connected to aerospace and um, the development of of that um, on a scale is massive. All the connections, the people that are involved, how um, truly a, you know, a butterfly in Tokyo can cause a tornado in Texas. Hmm. Um, yeah. Well, and just think for a moment, you know, not that it would ever happen, but what would happen if we didn't have aviation anymore and there was no more lights on the runways? I mean, everything would just grind to a complete halt. Halt, right. Yeah. And you know what is interesting is that I actually was in Los Angeles um, uh, during 9-11 mm -hmm. and I was on one of the first flights to get back to Honolulu mm -hmm. um, and the only reason why I was allowed on that flight was because I had an FAA uh, uh, designated badge but I tell you it was the most eerie thing um, going through Los Angeles and it was completely um, blackout. it was a blackout and um, there were only seven people on that flight coming in wow. and then Hawaii actually had a moratorium for uh, quite an extended amount of time uh, more than the, the mainland US I think we were down, even our tour uh, helicopters were down for about seven days thereafter. Wow. So, 
You and could hear a pin drop, which is unusual. Going to hit on the economy when that happened. That, and it was just eerie and unusual, and I'll never something I'll never forget. I have so much respect for um, you know flight and um, the maintenance of flight. Mm -hmm. It's um, yeah. And you don't really miss stunning. something until it's gone, and, and I guess it's significant when it's not there. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I think it's something that is addressed at Verge Hawaii every year too. You know, the um, the the leadership and state get together and talk about um, the importance of aviation and the connection of fuel and all the, all that impact mm -hmm, that it has mm -hmm, in the state, mm -hmm. also environment. Now we could probably talk about aviation in Hawaii and and you know the world for that matter for quite a while. But let's loop back a little bit back to the business. When you began to transition into the role of president at the company. Um, that must have been an interesting process for you to go through. You know what it was, and it was a it, it was a process that took a number of years um, because I am my father's daughter first, and so uh, you uh, you know there's the whole set of other challenges that come with that, and um, being in the aviation industry as well. So you know it's a very um, male dominated industry, Absolutely. and um, I also uh, work with a lot of military officials as well. So um, I had to find my way through um, these sorts of dynamics. Um, you know, after I went to college um, at Santa Clara, I went to mechanic school, and that's where I really earned, you know, the certification of um, being an aircraft mechanic. And then I went on to get my pilot's license, and um, that was kind of a direction I thought I was going to go. Um, aviation was home to me, so mm -hmm. I really felt like that this is where I would be. Um, I then diverted into playing professional beach volleyball, which. You know, wow. was, was fun. You know, that <laughs> took me to a lot of places, and that was really cool. But I also returned, you know, um, for a large portion of the year to the company. And um, in the earlier years, um, the uh, like in the uh, 2004, is when I really decided that I'm going to sink my teeth into the business, and I'm going to really um, have own my stake in it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when my dad really said, "Okay, well, here, hey, listen, you know, take this." Um, this renewables division and see, you know, do what you want to do with it and see what you can do. So that really was the first time he extended, you know, something to me that was my very own. Um, and, uh, you know, that developed, but, you know, I mean. And how did that work out when he gave that to you and mm -hmm. said, here, run with it, let's see what you could do. Was it really it all hands-off? Oh, no. or how, how? <laughs> it was like, run with, oh, never mind. Oh, but I can do, <laughs> or what you can do. But, you know, so, I mean, there was a lot of um, patience for both sides, you know, because, you know, you, you have the second generation coming in, but, you know, truly you have to respect the foundation of the first generation, what they mm -hmm. did, um, but also mind um, your long game, which includes the evolution of your marketplace, your audience, which in our marketplace, it was, um, you know, the FAA regulations, mm -hmm. military procurement <laughs> regulations changed as well. And um, all of that had to do with uh, how we are going to survive in this industry. And also the leadership change as well, being from my dad who was um, known, you know, throughout the industry for all these 20 something years. And, and it then must have been hard board. for some people to, you know, say, well, wait a minute, I'm supposed to go to Leah now, not the dad. Yeah, yeah you so know. It took a while. It did, imagine. but you know, I have to say that my dad was, um, you know, he had the foresight, first of all, to set us up as a women-owned small business, which is amazing because in the, in, in the 80s, that wasn't really the, the cool thing to do, you know. So he did it in an in industry that was male-dominated, and he had the foresight to at least set it up that way. Um, you know, I was one of my only sisters that decided to pursue it. And it was a very natural fit for me. Um, I really enjoy my clients, the industry, and um, the passing of the baton was um, was at a good time too because it, it uh, you know, his his strengths, um, you know, uh, change were different from mine. My strengths, you know. So I mean, when your company evolves, um, you have to look at how does the personnel, what are the strengths of the personnel, and what are the challenges of now that personnel in this industry. And I think for us. Um, the fact that I did go to aircraft mechanic school, that I could actually help our customers because some of us, you know, we still do uh, like a Napa parts uh, store for aircraft. Um, you know, so I still am able to um, to help the customers in that way. But well, you can talk the lingo. You know what they're talking about. I mean, uh -huh, that's got to yeah. give you some credibility. Well, it, in aviation, it has to because it's not an easy invitation to the industry. And um, you really have to earn your keep. Mm -hmm. You know, and so um, I, I truly um, respected what my dad did, and yet I had this fire in me where, you know, 
I wanted that in the innovation, the, the entrepreneur in me, where I was like, you know, I want to do more with this. Mm -hmm. And I can see us doing more with this. And um, when we partnered with uh, some of the, the greatest companies, because aviation is the gold bar, you know, within all the industries, um, we deal with a lot of um, cutting edge um, innovation solutions and manufacturing. And so being able to cross that over into other industries was uh, fun for me to do. Well, and we talked a little bit earlier. Um, you've got some experience with the University of Hawaii too, and do they, yes. they have a little component over thank there that kind of helps with that? Yes, yeah, thank you for mentioning because that actually was an integral part during the transition. Um, I'm actually the membership chair of the University of Hawaii Family Business Center. And um, that is, I know, close to your heart. And um, it's been wonderful because that, uh, that network allowed me to meet individuals that were very similar to us, even though the, um, they may have, they are, are all in different, different industries. We're the only aviation industry, um, aviation company. But you know, the challenges are very similar across the board. And it makes you feel normal, and it, makes, it gives you patience, mm. and um, also insight as to um, what are other people doing? You know, you don't have to invent the wheel when you're in a environment right. like that. And you don't have to make the same mistakes. I mean, if people can share mm -hmm. what they did wrong that may be better ways of approaching it, mm -hmm. you can learn from that and save a little heartache. Yes, tremendously. And the resources that I had utilizing those connections um, were very vital to us at the time of our transition as well. That really helped us. Right. Now, Dennis, I don't want you to go to sleep over there. So. <laughs> Um, you know, you, you were there this whole time where, where the, the transition, you know, working with the father and then working through the transition with Leah. I mean, what's, what's an outside person looking at this? What, what did you see that was going on? My perspective is I saw the founder who loved his business and loved his craft and customers, yet having to transition and wanting a successful successful uh, transition to his daughter and uh, having them come together with different thoughts, different skills and having to work together as a family. I saw on the other hand Leah coming in with the background, the knowledge, the training. It was a perfect fit. It wasn't like trying to take somebody to succeed a business but actually having somebody come in with the love and passion for this type of business and wanting to take over and build more for the next generation. I thought the combination matched very well and um, um, both wanted the same thing to succeed. Well, and they wanted the legacy to continue. Yes. You know, and that's a, a common goal that they could work together to make sure that it happens. But it takes mm -hmm. a special guy, not you know, a special person mm -hmm. to, to have the confidence to be able to pass the baton on to the next generation. You know, Both. And, mm -hmm. and having uh, somebody with the background to succeed in that, to not try to fit a square pig in a round hole. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to have to go on a short break. Um, and when we come back, what I want to do is take a, a little bit of time and explore what your vision for the company is going forward. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today talking with uh, Leah Hunt Young. of the uh, pr She's the president of Goldwing Supply and with Dennis Wong, who's a senior VP over at Hawaii National Bank. Uh, we're going to continue this conversation in about 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey. Spend the time with us as we look through and discover all of the ins and outs of this journey through life. We're on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. And I would love to have you with us. Come navigate the journey. Aloha. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. 
right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investing, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday. Aloha and welcome back to Business in Hawaii. We're here with Leah Young Hunt, who's the president of uh, the Gold Wing Supply Company and with Dennis Wong of the Hawaii National Bank. Uh, we were going to transition into a discussion a little bit about, you know, now that, that you've got the baton and you've got some control over what's going on, where do you plan on going with this company? Well, it's been an exciting last few years. Uh, definitely, um, I, as I mentioned before, my dad set us up as a woman-owned business mm -hmm. back in you know, the 80s. And um, I continued to um, set up uh, important corporate milestones for us. Uh, we actually received our certification as a woman-owned small business, um, as a disadvantaged business enterprise. Um, those are big advantages. That gets that opens some doors for you. It does. It does open the doors. Um, we do a lot of business with the federal government, so DBE has an impact there. Um, and then we also went on to um, go after our 8A certification, which is also within federal um, contracting as well. And um, you know, we set our sights a little bit uh, more aggressive, and we got went ahead and got our G on GSA schedule recently. All right, and so, explain to me what that means. Um, the GSA schedule allows you to sell products or a service on the federal forum. Okay. So allows um, anyone within the federal government to purchase directly um, from your company and you already negotiate pricing. So the pricing is generally fixed. They can just submit a PO without even having to um, request for a bid. And that's anywhere in a country. That's anywhere in the yeah, country and then also any military bases abroad. So you know any of our bases that are in Osan, Mm -hmm. Japan, Germany, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Europe, yeah, yeah, yep. all over. And so, yeah. uh, does that that create any special challenges for you? Have you started doing that yet, or is that something that you're about ready to start? You know, it was. Uh, we've actually, I've actually been researching the program since 2001. So your company definitely has to be in a certain position with uh, corporate structure-wise, but also just the documentation and your company's ability mm -hmm. to. Um, take on contracts or to work on that scale. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the manpower and um, the expertise, the talent and all those things. So it took me a while to figure out, you know, when is that for our company? And it took our company a little bit um, of time to mature into that. So we've actually only had that um, contract for um, o just over a year. And um, we were just recently, uh, well actually a few months ago, we're still negotiating it, but given our first sole source um, contract uh, through the program, which is wonderful. And it's within our wheelhouse, which is fantastic. It's within aviation. Sure. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's very good. Congratulations. And I guess some of these other certifications, too, you, you're still going to continue to explore how you can make the most out of those. Yeah, we're um, you know, the last certification um, that we're going for is our hub zone. And mm. so that is really um, uh, kind of an interesting one for us um, within the aviation industry and being Native Hawaiian women owned. So um, we're actually the only Native Hawaiian women-owned company in aerospace in the world. Wow. Um, in addition, uh, we have a, a lot of other services you know, that we're adding on, including renewables. Um, and we actually morphed into a technical solutions company where we truly go after um, hard to get, kind of the ungettable gets. And people come to us with really, really interesting challenges. So it's really fun. Well, one of the real interesting things that I learned from talking with you is that you um, invented a word or almost like an industry. Um, can you explain a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. That's really fun. Um, so a number of years ago, back in, I think 2001, you know, I, I mentioned to you, my dad kind of handed over the renewables idea and was like, I don't want to deal with that. That's too techie, <laughs> right? For Let the young, the young buck go after that. So um, we worked with a manufacturer that at the time was a pretty small manufacturer out of Canada. And they were creating st um, standalone self-contained solar devices. And if you look around, you know, they're on our US Coast Guard buoys. Um, we actually helped bridge that connection with aviation for them. And in 2007, we actually did the world's largest solar remote controlled airfield over at Pacific Missile Range on Kauai. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that was really super cool for me. I mean, if you can imagine, you know, actually proposing the solution and, um, you know, uh, uh, demonstrating the technology and going up and training. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was really fantastic. And actually, Hawaii National Bank was with us the entire time. So, so that was our, our first really big, big, big award. 
And, um, you know, for me, it was the feather in my cap, I think. You know, I needed And what to... was that word you created? Oh, yeah. So that word was uh, solar ecology. So, solar ecology. Yeah. And that word, actually, um, I, I just trademarked that or registered that word um, a few years ago. And that had to do with um, how we pitch solutions to our clients. So whenever we pitch a uh, solution to our client, we always talk about the educational process. Mm -hmm. So we would always talk about why our particular solar-powered product was essential and what component, why the components were essential, etc. So it was just natural for me that I should create the word for it. So solar ecology means a self-contained standalone solar power device that has a battery and smart technology. So in itself, it's pretty simple. It's a basically a tiny microgrid. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That, that definitely sounds high tech. <laughs> but, and Dennis, uh, like Leah mentioned, you were you you've been there. You've been working with them, and I guess as this business grows and expands and gets bigger and starts getting these contracts and have to deliver the product, uh, Hawaii National Bank is there to support and help with that, right? Yes, it's great because um, Hawaii National Bank is an SBA preferred lender, so we actually can approve loans in behalf of the SBA. In addition, you know, we have other products that we deal with the USDA and uh, we actually customize or tailor make our products to the certain, certain project, job or circumstance they're in. So they just come to us with what they're looking for and we will design something that will fit them. Good. You know, and that's what's nice about dealing with a bank that focuses on that segment of the market that's a little bit, they're nimble, they're quick, they're, they, yeah. you have to be responsive because to be a small business and be successful, you got to be able to be quick and be able to pivot and take advantage mm -hmm. of opportunities. Relationships has got to be there and you have to be updated and, you know, to communicate with each mm -hmm. other. Right. Where do you uh, see the future for, uh, for your company, for you and your company? Well, it's uh, like I said, it's been pretty exciting these last uh, few months in particular, last couple of weeks actually. And um, we are getting a lot of interest in partnerships and um, that's kind of coming out of a few different places within the aerospace industry, um, within um, even the defense side as well. So we're really exploring, you know, what is our, and, and really hus uh, hunkering down because the last few years we've really focused on achieving these corporate milestones mm -hmm that we want to take a breath and just go, okay, who are we? What do we want to do? This is the scope of opportunities, which is wider than I thought it was really going to be, yeah. which is exciting. It could be wider and it could also be deeper. I mean, this, this oh, could right. catapult you right up into a whole different level. So I've heard, yeah, so I've heard <laughs> because it's, it's interesting, you know, when I went to that conference last week hearing that, you know, a, so, a company is very similar to us. Um, now, you know, fast forward, you know, 10 years, 15 years, and it's it's quite uh, amazing and um, you know I mean it, it it always sounds so like oh that's so sexy it's such a buzzword it's so, it's so warm and fuzzy but you know for me I truly feel like um, you know we're 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 connected my workers are connected we're connected to the industry uh, we have to have both a short and a long game and that's really important to me not with internally but where we sit in the marketplace. Um, and that's changed really quickly over the past few years. So we kind of want to take our time. Well, and that makes sense. You don't want to rush into something um, and then regret it. You got to make sure that what you're going to be doing, you're going to you know, yeah. be serious about making it work. Yeah, and be a part yeah. of it too. Like yeah. truly be a part of it. Yeah. The, um, you know, this didn't happen by accident. This took a lot of planning, a lot of strategy, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of hard work by not only you, but your entire team mm -hmm. to get you to where you're at today. Um, you know, as far as sharing any any uh, knowledge to people that are out there and they're maybe looking forward to having something like what you've done. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a real success story for Hawaii. Uh, but there's a lot of people out there that want to try and replicate or do something similar, you know, in their own industry. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend for them? Mm -hmm. I mean, how, do, how should they approach this? Well, I think you, you can never overlook bridging connections. And it sounds very simple and it sounds very vanilla. But truly, that means that looking at connections, at who you are in your company, who your talent is, uh, what the you know the SWAT strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, just within mm -hmm. your company, mm -hmm. and then look at how is your company in relationship to the industry, and how is that industry evolving as well, and where with those strengths can you put yourself in the industry to succeed, 
and um, you know working smart versus working hard mm -hmm. and really being patient about um, opportunities that are presented to you and um, you know counting on your team because you know for me even though I was part of the aircraft parts side and all that and I really worked from the ground up you know I know that m what I do on a daily basis is not the same as what my workers do on a mm -hmm, daily basis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we have to maximize that efficiency sometimes just in front of us all the time with one another and then also you know be able to present solutions to the customer gathering mm -hmm. that information um, posing questions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because a lot of times the customer may think they know what they want exactly and we have to say well what about this or what if you did that or mm -hmm. what's next on your and try Show to bridge those connections yeah. for them and um, for us it's it's interesting we sit in a very unique um, place in the industry because we are connected with airport operator um, the operating staff in addition to engineering and the electricians so because we sit in a different position we see all of these um, these uh, little industries within their organization operating, we are able to bridge connections for them mm. and say, so well, they're like little silos out there, and you have to provide the bridge to connect them. Right, and and you know that's one thing that I can say that we do really well is we uh, we connect th the communication between them, and then we also do that with other airports. Mm. So oftentimes we're giving a workshop, and we've got Wheeler talking with um, you know Pacific Missile Range, and we've got them talking to K Bay and you know Anderson Air Force Base even. So lots of sharing of information yep. okay. and um, expertise, which is you know the the networking that we're talking about. You know, bridging connections on all different levels. You know, it's fascinating, and I, I think we probably have enough to talk about for another entire show on some of this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but Dennis, we, we've got about thirty seconds left. Any final thoughts about uh, you know what Hawaii National Bank does to help support small businesses and, and make Leah successful? Well, what attracted me to the bank originally at Hawaii National Bank was its involvement with the small to mid-sized business. We like to refer them to locally owned, closely held businesses. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's the relationship value that we have, the closeness, the connection, and I like dealing directly with our customers. So it's been a great career with me with 35 years at the bank. Very good. Uh, and it's nice to have those relationships. If you mentioned, you know, and we've, we've all mentioned the mm -hmm. value of those relationships and how that is one of the keys to success for any business, large or small. Mm -hmm. So, well, thank you both for being on the show this week. Thank um, you, Rich. Looking forward to having you back again. Uh, Dennis, as always, you can thank you. You know, come back whenever you're ready to, to talk again. And, thank you. Uh, and Leah, please, let's have an update, you know, as things unfold and, uh, and you, you explode yeah. into this global uh. marketplace. You know. We'd like to hear all about it. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, this is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. Uh, we broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30, and we highlight individuals and their companies uh, in their successes of doing business here in Hawaii. It is challenging, but there are people who can make it work. Until next week, aloha. <laughs>